What if I told you that one in a hundred people in the general population are psychopaths? They sit next to you on the bus, they run the companies you rely on, and even perform neurosurgery at your time of need. If these psychopaths surround us, I want to understand two things. Why don't all of them turn into raging murderers? And are their brains wired differently from the rest of us? Let's do this. This is the puzzle of conditions where crime and the disordered mind are related. Recent research suggests that psychopathy is evident in the brain and that those who wind up killing over and over may have been born to do so. We're concerned here with the psychopath. Psychopathy isn't actually a diagnosis, it's a set of traits. These include lack of empathy, impulsivity, grandiose sense of self-worth, superficial charm, and pathological lying. The hair checklist is a set of 20 characteristics exhibited by psychopaths and is used by psychiatrists to identify them. There's a link in the description for it if you wanna check if you're one of them. I've been running on the assumption that I'm not a psychopath and the hair checklist has left me pretty confident that I'm not. That's a relief. My interpretation of these characteristics is that each of them exist on a spectrum. Turn them all up to a thousand and you've got yourself a Ted Bundy. We really don't want that. However, having some mild psychopathic tendencies may allow you to thrive in modern life. Stay with me here. Superficial charm and persuasiveness lend themselves very well to sales. A lack of emotional depth may allow you to minimize your anxiety, allowing you to try new things you wouldn't otherwise do. A self-proclaimed psychopathic neurosurgeon said this, the most important thing when you're conducting a dangerous operation, a risky operation, is you've got to be very cool under pressure. You can't have too much empathy for the person that you're operating on because you wouldn't be able to conduct that operation. The hair checklist may potentially hold the answer to why all psychopaths don't turn into murderers. Take an individual who scores very highly for lack of remorse, short temper, impulsivity, and irresponsible behavior. That's a really bad recipe. However, scoring for lack of empathy, superficial charm, and grandiose sense of self-worth could lead to success in business. And I'm not trying to glorify psychopathy here, far from it. What I'm trying to do is to show that all psychopaths aren't sitting in a prison cell following a murderous spree. Now, I wanna know if they've got different brains. I found it interesting that a lot of times with psychopaths, it's not so much what is activated, but what isn't. So we've talked about the characteristics of psychopaths. Now let's explore some theories of why they may be like that. It's important to note that these are theories, not proven causations, but they're very interesting nonetheless, in my opinion. To understand empathy, we need to understand how emotion is governed in the brain. The limbic system has this responsibility, but we're not gonna go into all parts of that. Let's focus on this thing called the amygdala. The amygdala sits centrally in the brain. Its role is to evaluate everything we experience and bookmark any potential threats or rewards. Take a cliff, for example. The amygdala sees that as a falling off place and makes sure that we're hyper aware of that danger. It stimulates the hypothalamus to release cortisol and adrenaline, activating our fight or flight response. In the context of the cliff, flight is probably the logical option. One clever way to be aware of danger is to notice when others are scared because there must be a reason. The amygdala uses our sight to evaluate the emotions of those around us, outsourcing the perception of danger to all those people. This threat detection system is dysfunctional in psychopaths. They don't notice the emotions of others like we do. Imaging of the brain showed lower levels of amygdala activation when subjects were shown moral violations and fearful faces. They also showed that as subjects scored higher on that hair checklist that we discussed, their amygdala activation decreased. So the part of your brain that activates when you're scared and notices when others are scared isn't working properly. And as you become more psychopathic, it works less and less. Psychopaths have a warped view of themselves, a view that places themselves above the rest of them. 
and it allows them to justify their callous actions. This warping is grounded in memory. Episodic memory is where all of our experiences and encounters are stored. I always find it hilarious when people retell stories. The recollections never quite match the event. You could blame this on the person consciously elaborating, or maybe the situation actually looked like that from their perspective. Either way, the story doesn't match. As it happens, psychopaths have impairments in the parts of the brain responsible for episodic memory and self-referential experiences. This brings us to the third reason why their stories may not match. Their brains actually change the story to make them into the hero. Here's the issue. The way these studies are carried out leaves potential for bias. They take large groups of psychopaths, scan them, and then report the findings. In normal studies, 64% of scans are usually labeled, nothing to see here. Whereas in these psychopath studies, only 9% of the scans were labeled this. This study thinks that confirmation bias may be affecting these results. Psychopaths make up 1% of the population. So the first hurdle here was to work out whether I'm one of them. The hair checklist left me pretty confident that I'm not. Next was to scour the research. The psychopath magnetized gave me great insight into how having an amygdala that isn't functioning could lead to a lack of empathy and how the paralimbic structures associated with memory could lead to a deep love for the man or woman that's looking back at you in the mirror. However, this research is far from bulletproof. There's likely to be some bias in these studies, but that doesn't discount the trends that we've seen here. It just means there's much more work to be done. Thanks very much for watching. I'll leave a link for the hair checklist so that you can see how you score on the psychopathy scale. Drop a comment down below with any of your thoughts and one last question. Is now a bad time to subscribe?